What's up, boys? About a month ago, I started playing Final Fantasy XIV, and a few days ago, I finished A Realm Reborn. Today, I want to give you a review of that experience. I uh, went through the whole story. I went through all of the post A Realm Reborn content. I did all of the raids, including all of the ones on Extreme with minimum item level and no echo in order to have as much of an authentic experience as possible. Did not do Savage Coils yet, however. And I have had a very good time. I think that I've actually really enjoyed myself. And before I get into just in general why I feel that way, I want to explain kind of what I went into it with the perspective of. Because going into Final Fantasy XIV, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I had a million people telling me, oh, you should play this class, you should play on this server, you should play this way, you should keybind this way, you should play in this uh, with this action bar, you should play with this add-on, you should play uh, with a boost, you should not boost, etc. Right? I had a million voices in my head, and um, uh, well, a million more voices in my head, and I just was going insane having these people try to tell me exactly how to play a video game. And at a certain point, I just told myself, well, listen, I'm going to play it the way I want to play it. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And I heard a lot about the story of Final Fantasy XIV, and I felt to myself that this is a game that is primarily driven by that story, by that narrative process, and that's really what I want to focus on. So I played a lot of the game uh, primarily by, as a single-player game. I went through the quests, I read every Everything involved and uh, the ironic thing is that if I wasn't streaming it I would not have done that and I feel like I've had a better experience because I did stream it which is usually not the case with streaming video games because whenever you're playing it off stream you'll have more time to take everything in but the reality is I know myself and I wouldn't have read the stuff in the same way that I did uh, whenever I saw it and I did it on my stream and experiencing it with you guys so I want to talk to you guys all about where those high points were, where the low points were, and just in general kind of how I felt about the whole story. Now, if you want to take a broad approach to the Final Fantasy story, I find that one thing that's very interesting about it is that there are very few characters and very few forces in Final Fantasy that are purely chaotic evil. And if you want to look at the Dungeons and Dragons alignment chart, there are very few pure evils in, Dun in, a, well, in Dungeons and Dragons, there's a lot of them, but in Final Fantasy there are actually very few of those. And oftentimes, as you learn more about the story, you'll learn that many times the evil is misunderstanding, or the uh, you know the the chaotic nature of something is misunderstood. And um, I find that to be very interesting. And I think also it lends itself to telling much better stories in terms of redemption, and also in terms of retribution, because I find that to be much less common in Final Fantasy than it is in, let's say, World of Warcraft. And I've noticed that in, in many cases with the game that, you know, this character that does this terrible thing is granted, uh, you know, they, they atone for their sins and they're sorry and they, they willingly turn themselves in. And I think that that degree of, uh, of redemption and that degree of kind of, uh, I think, true mor moral grayness is, uh, it lends itself to creating a more compassionate player base in a way, because I think that gives people the narrative idea inside of the story that sometimes whenever people do things that are bad, you might not necessarily understand exactly why these things are happening. And so it's kind of interesting to see how the player base is different from other MMOs and see how some of that could be reflected from the narrative storytelling inside of the game and how that imprints onto the player base. And I think for me personally, the high points in a story, I had a few high points in a story, uh, definitely. I thought the, the one thing that was so fucking cool was uh, Garuda, right, with the song and the music and everything like that. The fight itself was okay, it was fine, but I really liked the song for it and the music. And then later on doing Ultima Weapon on Extreme, I thought that was really, really cool. Just because of how flashy and just absolutely dazzling it was. And um, in the story itself, the narrative itself, when did I really uh, find myself attached to it and when did I really care? I think the first time that I found it to be very interesting, and I really thought it was cool, was in the coils of uh, Baphomet, or whatever you call them. Um, whenever, uh, you know, Alphanod the Redditor and uh, his sister, Alice, uh, they meet their grandfather, uh, Louis Swan, and they're like, well, what the fuck happened? Like, how how is Baphomet still alive? I thought you killed him. And, you know, what, what happened all those years ago in the Calamity? And then it just fucking, he just looks to the side. And then it fades out and it plays a full fucking CGI cinematic of this guy literally turning into a phoenix, a primal. The guy himself turns into a fucking primal and it turns into a fucking Kamehameha bolt, 
pierces Baphomet's heart, fucking basically almost kills him, and then rebirths the entire world. And to see that in an actual cinematic, whenever you don't really know what happened, it's very gray, and to then just find the story and, and realize that something that you thought was evil or whatever was actually just the most pure action that you could possibly take, yeah, I think that was just so incredible and so cool. And that was, in terms of like a, uh, what's the word for this? In terms of a, uh, like, theatrical perspective, I think that was definitely a high point. But if you want to talk about, like, what really got me and what really made me feel like this story is fucking cool and this is, like, really special, is actually whenever you were going to the top of the, uh, the fallen airship. Apparently there was, like, some big war and the dragons uh, interceded in the war and it's this, like, giant dragon, like, Midgard Summer, like, wrapped himself around, like, the main, like, flagship and the flagship went down and it killed everybody in the ship, obviously, and also killed the dragon. And, um... But the dragon wasn't necessarily dead. Nobody really knew what was wrong with the dragon. Nobody knew what was going on. But there was an idea that the dragon was calling to the other dragons to attack uh, this other place. So you go up, you ascend the top of the ship, and you finally get to the top of it, and you see the dragon. And the dragon's eyes turn red, and it starts talking to you. And the dragon, uh, it was supposed to be fucking dead. And now you're just having this conversation with this dragon. And what I thought was so fucking cool about that is that, especially even in a game like Final Fantasy, it becomes even harder to do this, is that you have these moments in certain stories where the storytelling takes a story that has a scope of this and it turns it into this. And it's so hard to have a moment like that and have it be as pure and as sublime as it has to be in order for it to really have that real pure impact and that real emotional uh, response. And I actually think that they did an incredibly great job with that. And that's where I really kind of got hooked. Because I think to myself, like, where is the moment that takes the scope of what you what you experience and it takes the mysticism and the mystery and the fantasy of the universe that you're part of and it just multiplies it? And I thought of a few examples, right? I think that uh, in terms of, like, a personal example for me, it was whenever I was off the coast of Westfall in World of Warcraft, and I just started swimming in a direction, and I found the Gurubashi Isle. And I thought I ran the game at level 11 or level 15 or something, and then I see these guys are level 63 elites, and I'm like, oh my god. I had no idea what I was talking about. This game is way bigger than I could ever imagined. And if you want to talk about, like, narratives, like, where, where's another narrative that kind of had this same idea? I can come up with like two examples that are very good, I think, uh, to, to prove my point. I think that the first example is uh, in Lord of the Rings, whenever Gandalf comes back in the Twin Towers, <laughs> excuse me, the Two Towers, um, and uh, he comes back, and they thought he had died. And he just, you know, shows himself, fucking disarms everybody else, you know, Gandalf, or, uh, you know, Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas in just a split second, and he's like, I'm back, I beat the fucking Balrog. And this was just like, oh my god, right? Because you would have never expected this to happen. And it's like, it takes the scope of what Gandalf is, what he represents and everything, and it just makes the world so much bigger. And you have it that occurs, and again, like this very pure and this very, in a way, straightforward and sublime way. And I think that's just what's so special about stories like this. And another example of this that I can use is the uh, clips in a uh, berserk. Whenever, uh, obviously, like Griffith, this is I'm I'm I think that it might be obvious here, but there are going to be a lot of spoilers in this. So um, if, if you don't want any spoilers, you're probably already mad. But um, step away now. And uh, anyway, uh, Griffith ascends to becoming uh, a member of the God Hand, and uh, he becomes Femto. And all the way up until then, you were just fighting, you know, Guts was fighting and Griffith fighting the Band of the Hawk, you know, they're fighting like different random mobs that, you know, they fought Nos Nosferatu Zod, but it was just like some random guy. And the, the Eclipse, where you literally see, you know, Void and Slon and all the other members of the God Hand, and they're just there, and it just fucking happens, and it completely turns everything on its head. And again, it takes a world that's like this, and it makes it like this. And I think that moment there really fucking got me. And that's something that I just, I, I can't, I, I fucking loved it, man. And the thing is, is you have other stories that try to have a moment like that. But the reality is that a moment like that occurs in a way naturally. And whenever you force it, 
it's not real. And I think the best example of a moment like that that was forced is obviously whenever Sylvanas breaks apart the Helm of Domination and opens up the sky of, uh, of the Shadowlands. And of course it does have that literal earth-shattering perspective to it, but it doesn't have that emotional... Uh, it doesn't have that emotional connection where, like, you are, you know, it's like the the painting where, like, you know, man touches God. And it doesn't have that divine presence to it that I think a lot of the other uh, previous examples did. And um, actually, I think when all of those examples, literally a divine presence. But um, the point is that, that that's the point in the story where I really, really was uh, engaged. And I thought that was really special and really cool. And uh, other than that, I, I want to say the story in general, I think, was much better than what I had expected it to be. Uh, I think that especially for an MMO, I can see why so many people are, uh, are they're invested in the story and why so many people care about it so much. And I'm not surprised. I think that it's incredible. I think it's very well designed. And I'll be honest, there are many cases in the story where I was very angry. I was like, just fucking kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. And, uh, you know, I think I probably would have been right, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's the way the story goes. And uh, it does make me very excited to see what Heaven Ward, Heaven's Ward is going to have as well. Now, whenever you talk about like, the combat itself, I think that the two and a half second GCD, uh, I, I knew assumingly, like, this is... They said, people said the raids were hard. Like, there's no way somebody's going to say the raids are hard whenever you can only hit one button every two and a half seconds. So I knew that there was more to it than that. And big surprise, there was. I think the raids in general are, are very well designed. Uh, they're definitely not, uh, at least the Realm Reborn ones, and again, this is excluding Savage Coils that I have not done, uh, the, the Realm Reborn fights do not have the same type of like mechanical and DPS requirements that something like uh, you know Mythic Castle or Mythic Sanctum of Domination would require uh, in World of Warcraft. But uh, I think that it's kind of like comparing something that came out in you, you know like Wrath of the Lich King raids versus uh, you know the Realm Reborn raids, and in that case, it, it's much more of a closer comparison. So I do really look forward to doing more of the raids, and I I felt like. It's funny because as a tank, usually you just sit there and tank, right? That's, that's about it. But we did uh, Ramua, uh, or the, the Forest Lord, the Lord of Leaven, and um, we did him, and it was like, <laughs> again, right? This is what I used to have to do as a tank. Now I have to do this. And I'll admit, there was a little bit of growing pains there. It was hard for me to do, but I'm glad that I did. And I look forward to doing more fights like that as well. Uh, I think that there's a certain degree of overcoming challenges and uh, winning in that way, especially whenever people uh, know that something is difficult and, and to overcome it like that, that, that's fulfilling to me that I do find fun. And I think that a lot of my audience enjoys it as well. So uh, I, I do really enjoy the raids. I think that's probably, if I had to say, like, why do I really, really like playing the game, besides the Gold Saucer, uh, why do I really, really like playing the game? It's because of the raids. Uh, I think that the raids are the most enjoyable thing for me, they're the most fulfilling thing for me, and they feel the best whenever we complete them and whenever I get better gear. Um, there, like, there's like little small things, right, where like I wish that the numbers in the game uh, displayed differently, kind of more like World of Warcraft. Uh, I feel like the truth is that Classic WoW, I think, has the best floating combat text of any game pretty much ever. And I'd love to see, the, you know, every other game from the future, uh, you know, from the rest of time, just take what Classic WoW does and just do that. But uh, overall, it's not that big of a deal. And I do think that the less of an emphasis on damage meters in general and damage in general does allow players to focus more on the mechanics and take in the aesthetics of the fight rather than the specifics of the fight. And I think that does make for a more holistic experience. So overall, uh, I've had a really great time. I think the story has been uh, very compelling to me, and especially now that we're uh, entering into Heaven's Ward. And uh, I'm not talking to... Uh, What's his name? Like, uh, I'm thinking of his name, Count Dripula. Uh, what, Count Four Temps or something like that? I, I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, that, that's basically where we're at now in the story. Uh, I did the whole Dark Knight quest line. I think that was really fun. But it's funny for me to see that there's a lot of people that told me, oh, Realm Reborn is going to take you so long and you're going to get so bored. It's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm going to get bored. Like, this is literally a quest that takes me 15 minutes. Like, how am I going to get bored in 15 minutes? Like, you stupid. I did a achievement in WoW 
that required me to get 250,000 honorable kills. And in an entire day of farming, you would get maybe one or 2,000. Are you kidding me that I would get fucking bored? Not a chance. So I really enjoyed that a lot, and I think all the little side activities, like the gold saucer, like the chocobo racing, etc. Now I find those to be very fun as well, and it sounds stupid, but I'm actually really excited for the jumping puzzles in the game. Uh, apparently there's one in Stormblood or something like that that I'm going to be doing. I watched Rich fail on it for many hours. So um, either way, I, uh, I'm, I'm just having a good time. I'm, having, I'm enjoying myself. It's fun. I'm playing the game off stream and uh, just trying to do uh, what I want to do and I've uh, missed that a lot. Uh, again, I, I think I say this in all of my videos as I'm wrapping everything up here. Um, I'm not quitting WoW. I uh, really enjoy WoW as well. But it's been great to be able to play something different and to have a different perspective on the game. And I think that it's helped me a lot. Uh, I really appreciate everybody who's been so supportive over this past month and everything with just uh, you know watching the streams and just being positive in general, uh, not only with the Final Fantasy content, but with the stuff that I did with WoW, and also the stuff that I did with New World 2. And I look forward to doing more things like that that are uh, different and more variety focused in the future. And I really appreciate you guys giving me the confidence to be able to do that. So thank you. And I also look forward to doing Heaven's Word and getting, apparently if you get all the birds in Heaven's Word, you get like this massive like golden, like uh, like, Mass, I don't know, like a, a golden Lugia, pretty much. Like, we're, we're, we're doing that one. That That's going to happen 100%. And uh, I just, uh, I'm having fun, man. It's, it's really enjoyable for me to just go through the game in the very, very measured way that I have and just take every experience uh, one at a time and try to do everything in the most authentic way as I can. So either way, uh, I want to say thank you guys all so much for uh, watching. Uh, I've really enjoyed the game, and I look forward to apparently doing the fun part of the game, because I, I enjoyed the post Realm Reborn content. I thought it was completely fine. So if that was fun, and uh, that was enjoyable for me, I fully expect that Heaven's Word will be a thousand times better, and I look very much forward to doing it myself. So that's about all I've got. I've enjoyed myself a lot, and I look forward to doing a lot more. So until next time, boys. Peace.